Okay, what I've brought back up on the screen here in part three is the uh, basic diagram again. We just had a quick glimpse in part two of the uh, program, but I needed to bring the diagram back up just one more time and we'll keep going back and forth actually between this diagram and the uh, computer program uh, because the information is going to be captured by both. Okay, so anyhow, this is figure number one again, and basically all we're going to be doing is transferring this information into the program. This is sort of our layout design as to how the conduit system uh, is going to look. We've already discussed that, but when you do the, the layout itself, just draw it out and actually label your transition points like they've done here, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And uh, also at the same time, you're going to create the uh, tension points, critical points like T0, T1, T2, all the way through until you get to your final location, which is T6 here. Okay, so now that's how we're going to input this data into uh, the computer program. What's key that's going into the program would be uh, the sweep radius and the sweep angle and the straight section distances. That's Those are the uh, values that we're going to be inputting into the program to come up with our final tension value. Now something I've added here is the ham calculations or calculator values that were done as part of this example states that from A to G the total tension in pounds was <coughs> excuse me 3,209 pounds and if we did the same calculation from G back to A in the reverse order it turns out to be 6,362 pounds so what we are going to determine is that when we finish our calculations will we come up with these two values or how close we're going to be to those values that they previously had done. Okay? Alright, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to bring back up the program again and uh, then you'll get a chance to uh, see exactly what I mean as far as what I'm going to do here. Okay? Okay, here's the program again. Uh, remember we're going to go from A and I think we're going to location G. Now we're going to really start using it the values I explained to you earlier what basically each thing on the top section here as far as the items on the top section is as to what they represent. And you notice that I have numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These are the steps basically that you're going to take going through the program before uh, you run the calculation. So let's follow the steps. Uh, we've already got our uh, location values A and G, so beginning and end points. So let's go ahead on and put in the cable that they wanted us to install in the conduit system. What, it, what do we know about it? Well, we know that it's three conductors. Step two says six inch and the coefficient of friction that's going to be used on this particular one is uh, 0 0.2 because that's what they gave us in the, uh, in the preliminary sketch as far as the figure number one is concerned. So let's take a look at that and see just what we come up with. Uh, there you have it uh, at the top, we had six inch conduit. They told us that the uh, conduit ID is 6.11, so we're going to need that value. And they actually wanted to have a coefficient of friction of 0 0.2, so that's what we're going to be using for coefficient of friction. So I can actually either click it up here for a coefficient of friction of 0.2, or I can just hit other. So I'm going to hit other. Okay, so now I've got 
the first three or four elements in, in uh, the first three elements actually into the program the conductor size, conduit size, and the coefficient of friction we want to use for pulling through the conduit itself. Step number five down here is pretty critical. In this particular step, we're going to go to use these calculated parameters to pick up some more information, but if you notice here, I have conductor is already listed, but I don't have the conductor that we had as far as the example is concerned. Uh, I have 2 strand, 2 watt, 2 strand, 500, 4 watt, but I don't have the uh, conductors that were specified by the, uh, uh, by the company that's using it in this diagram. So let's take a look. Alright, I'll go back over to there again and it said that the size of the cable is three conductors, 1100 KCML aluminum EPR concentric and that's what we're going to be using in this particular program so let's do that and go back to the program okay so I'm going to click this because it's not in the list above so I'm going to have to click it here okay then this message box comes up real quick. It says, you must answer all four questions. Uh, there's something that's going to pop up here, so let's see. Okay, you can see I've got four questions here. And, and, and the first question basically says, uh, what is the size and type of a conductor you're using? Well, we've already stated it was 1100. And it's uh, EPR. And I'm just going to say aluminum here, that should work out pretty good for that. So, okay, aluminum. Uh, did I? Okay. And you'll find that the program is kind of sensitive if you have to, especially if you don't type like me. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, so let's go over here to the next box. Next question is asked us what's the OD of the conductor itself? And I remember that we talked about this earlier uh, but anyhow I'm going to give you the OD the outside diameter of the conductor uh, is 2.05 okay and the ID of the conduit is 6.11 so let's see if we can go back over here to the program OD of the conductor is single conductor is 2.05 and uh, it says it wants the weight of the conductor. Well, I know that the weight of the conductor is 2.36. This is data that's actually straight from the manufacturer's catalogs or straight from the standards book of the company that you're working for. And then the last thing is this was the coefficient of friction. 0.2, that's what we wanted to use based on the uh, diagram itself. So, I've got all four questions answered. And what I would need to do now is I need to go back and do the calculations. I'll have the program do the calculations. So, this is return to pools. That's just the button you have to click to get back to where we were before we came over here. It says, now it says, please press to show calculate parameters button again to obtain the weight correction factor value if you need it and you notice here that it says weight co uh, correction factor so I'm going to click this button like it just told me to do it says kick it, uh, click it again if you need it so I'm going to click it message box come up and just gives me some general information as far as um, what to expect and it does tell me it says that the jam ratio is between 2.8 and 3.1 in that particular realm uh, you will likely have some possible jamming occur in a conduit as you're pulling it through the system this is a warning you can still do the calculations but this is something that you want to stay away from if you possibly can okay 
Okay, and it says when the percent field is less than or equal to 40%, then the cables are likely to be in a crater position. So it's just giving us a hint there. So now it gives me my weight correction factor and my percent field, which is 34%. Um, look at the other items that were populated. The OD of the uh, cable is 2.05. That came from that other one of those questions that we had to answer. Conduit ID that came from the beginning here. Uh, basically, um, that was information that was given to us as one of the design criteria that they are using for the specifications on their conduit. Uh, you, I'll discuss that a little bit more as we get into it. Then we had the total cable weight is 7.08 pounds. We had the uh, uh, one of the other questions that on the other page was uh, uh, the cable weight per foot. So it was basically three times that cable weight per foot. And then the jam ratio in the straight section 2.98 and in the sweep section is 3.13. It's a warning, that's why it's in red. Remember we saw that before uh, as far as what they were telling us about the jam ratios. Okay, at 2.8, 3.2, we can be very, very careful about that. Uh, but now, what you've done is that we've populated the entire top section, basically. Uh, at that 2 point, I mean the 0 0.2 for the coefficient of friction. And there's the uh, cable that we specified from the other screen. So now it's a matter of coming down here to the bottom section and filling it out and uh, properly so that we can do the calculations. Before we didn't have all of these buttons in here until after we pushed this show calculated parameters. Now some other options are starting to pop up. But what we're going to work on before we talk about these in depth is to let's populate the calculation section. He says here, number step six, it says T initial. Ah, that's T zero according to our diagram. So what I want to do is go back to the diagram and take a look at it. Alright, so T initial, uh, and we've already talked about it before, uh, one of the previous ones, that our initial tension is zero as far as what this particular utility wants to do when they uh, did their calculations as far as their pull intentions are concerned. So T0 is 0. And you notice that I have a T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, and T6. So I'm going to put the data at each one of these locations uh, into the program. But the data I'm inputting is the radiuses the sweep radius, the straight section lights. That's the data I'm putting in there and the angle of the sweep section. So I have a radius, an angle, and then I have a length for the straight sections that I put in. So let's do this first section, first two sections. The first one says I start with a radius of five foot and I make a 90 degree turn. So let's go back over to program. T initial, zero. Um, then what we're going to do here is basically uh, since it's a 90 degrees turn that we're putting in in the beginning, it says decimal sweep angle in degrees or straight section in feet. This is the curve section that we're looking at. So nine zero, tab across, over here it says sweep radius, radius is 5 foot, and then I'll just go to the next section. Okay, so what I've done now is I already put in 90 degrees, 5 foot radius. That's what we had to work with here. Uh, I'll go back over and I'll just show you where I got that from, and then uh, move forward. 90 degrees at point A, 5 foot radius. That's what we put in there. So 90 and 5. That's the only thing I had to input into the program at that location. It's 90 and 5. Now I go to the next section, which is at T2. 
and then I'll put in what the value for T2 is supposed to be and what I need to put in for the sweep. So let's look at T2 real quick. really not look at T2 I'm calculating T2 I'm sorry but T1 turned out to be uh, the beginning of the straight section so let's take a look at the sweep here okay after the sweep radius of 90 degrees we get over to T2 but to get to T2 we have to go through the sweep section of 90 degrees first and now we're doing the straight section which so I think it was uh, 200 feet um, and since it's a straight section, it's zero. So let's go back and take a look at that real quick. Come on, come on. All right. Yes, it was 200 feet. So we started off with zero. We went through a 90 degree bend, five foot radius. Now we're at. T now we're starting off at T1, basically. We're going to go through a straight section. So, since it's a straight section, there's no sweep radius, so that's zero, and the distance is 200 feet. So, let's take a look at that 200 feet, zero radius because it's a straight section. So, now we come back to the next segment that we're going to look at in the diagram. The next segment of the diagram basically um, is going to look like this another 90 degrees and another 5 foot radius so that's going to get us to our next point so let's go back into the program this is kind of awkward for me 90 degrees tab 0 and then now I believe we have a, another long straight section uh, to put in so let's go back down here and take a look at that straight section 400 foot section 90 degrees and then another 600 foot section so let's get those oh no more 400 foot section 90 degrees okay so 400 uh, straight section and you notice I made a mistake here that should have been 5 there 90 degrees 5 foot 400 uh, straight section, another 90 degrees. It's difficult going back and forth, five foot, and then a 600 foot straight section. Okay, so we should have three 90 degree sweeps. One, two, three. We started off with a 90 degree section, and it had a five foot radius. The next section starts with a 200 foot straight section, which has a radius sweep of zero degrees. And then we're back to another 90, five degrees, and five foot radius, I'm sorry. And then 400 foot, zero, a 90, five foot radius, and then 600. So those should be our sections if we did them right. So let's take a look at it. Uh, quickly okay we have a 90 200 feet a 90 400 foot a 90 600 foot and that's going from A to G 3209 3209 pounds this is where the calculations come into play and uh, what we're going to do is see what that turns out to be 95 200 0 95 400 0 95, 600, 0. Okay, it looks like we've got all our values in. Let's do a calculate tension. Alright. This is okay. And you notice that the value turned out to be 3,209 pounds. So this gives us a running tally as to what's happening as we work our way through the conduit system as far as the uh, tensions are concerned. Likewise, the same thing happens with the uh, sidewall bearing pressure as it's being calculated through the system. And you can see that 3209 and what the original calculation, hand calculation was, was 3209. 
So we're right on the money with them as far as that is concerned. The only thing now is that, oh, no, I got to do the calculations backwards, okay, to see what it is from, from G to A. Because basically what you want to do is use the smallest value out of the two to determine the direction as which you're going to pull your conduit. I mean, your conductor. All right, so now I'll just go back to the program. Uh, let's go back to the program, and you'll see that in the program, uh, we're back at it again. I just want to reverse it. I don't want to go from T1 to T6. I want to go from T6 to T1. So I'm going to reverse my values. So it says the reverse direction pull. Now I swapped it. We ended up before at 600, and we started at a 90 degree sweep. This time we're going to start at 600 in and end up at the 90 degree sweep. We can look at that real quick. I think we can. So if I start at 600 here, I come to a 90, 400, 90, 200, 90. It's just the reverse of what I've done before. So there we have it, 690, 490. You can see we're going backwards. All I have to do now is say calculate tensions. One more time. It turns out to be 6,362. 6, and let's compare that to the value that we had before. 6,362 pounds is what the uh, hand calculation showed. Uh, so we're right on the money as far as the values on the system. And you notice here I added like a one six six inch conduit to the diagram to identify what the conduit size and also identify the conductor sizes in the uh, in the pull section itself. So I'm gonna go back over real quick uh, to the program and show you a couple other key things and, uh, to, that you need to know. Um, well. We originally stated that we wanted it to be 0 0.2 uh, as far as the coefficient of friction is concerned, but in order to do that, we have to have a proper amount of lubrication to do that. And I'm going to click over here. And you notice this pops up on the screen. It gives us as lubricant requirements uh, from G to A. Uh, total section of length is. 1,223 feet and the gallons, pourable gallons required is 11.1 .1. and uh, if you don't use the pour, pour, pourable gallons, I'm sorry, uh, then you have actually uh, these uh, uh, front end packs, some places call them, uh, bags of, of uh, lubricant that you can uh, use. So that gives you the lubricant and I've showed you how to interchange it. We can do that reverse direction again if you just want to see it. Let's do it. It flops like so. And then all I have to do is hit calculate tensions. And it gives me the same information again. It actually tells me this down here too from A to G. The tension is 3200. That's the way originally we did it. So, um, that's a real fast overview of what the, uh, the program will do for you and then you can reset values to go back and um, uh, do whatever you need as far as uh, making changes to your lights if you want to. That is the program. Uh, real fast but uh, it's pretty neat. Um, and if you... Oh, I mentioned earlier the uh, jam ratios the program uses uses the jam ratios for the straight sections uh, as far as because the straight sections is basically the major part of the conduit system but uh, either way whether the calculations are being done for jam ratios with the straight section or the sweep sections you don't want this to be read so to eliminate this type of scenario you would actually you would actually try to go to a larger conduit but um, uh, it's a it's something you need to keep track of. Okay, all right. Then I think that's going to do it for me now. Uh, 